Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everybody. Ah, uh, the sisters are here. To, is there anything on there? No. We're good, right? <laughs> Sometimes we forget we have our whiteboard behind us. And, you know, I mean, there might be, like, stuff. <laughs> like, lists of Q3 release products. Hello, that Lizette. We can't share. <laughs> Welcome. So Sally and I were talking about this morning about our Tuesday Live with the sisters mm -hmm. and what our topic was going to be. And there's something fresh in our hearts and minds. Um, in fact, I posted on my personal page, I think the day before yesterday, um, as I was my drive time thinking, how many of y'all like have all your deep thoughts on your drive time? That's the only time I can even think at all, much less yeah. deep, deeply, because with six kids, you don't get to think. Hi, Gary. So car time is my thinking yes. time. Yes, and sometimes when I force myself to turn off podcasts or radio and just the have input. quiet. The input, it's yeah. It's so, so good. Not to go off on a tangent, but that's kind of, there's something there. In today's day and age, we do not give ourselves enough time to... Just quiet. Just quiet. And not even just quiet, but to be bored. Because what people don't realize is when your mind rests, mm -hmm. that's when it's most creative. Boredom has purpose. Exactly. In our creative processes. To be, to be still is a is a thing mm -hmm. it's god tells us to be still and there's actual physiological and brain connection reasons for that so so okay. true carry on so my thought was um gratitude cannot occupy the same space as entitlement mm -hmm. and as i was thinking about that and actually praying like lord show me what else is about this? Help me just like unpack it for myself, for my personal growth. Mm -hmm. And he was faithful. I feel like anytime you ask him to reveal something dark in your own heart, he's faithful. <laughs> <laughs> and he was faithful. And he actually gave me an example. And I'm going to take one for the team and share that example. I have an example when you're done, actually. Okay. I just thought we'll of both it. Take one I for just the team. thought of it. Yeah. <laughs> So <clears throat> Aaron and I have, we have this fixer and we've been working on it for some time now and it's our forever, God willing, our forever home. What's the original year it was built? 1865. Yeah. New foundation, everything. Yeah. Built yeah. So it's right a huge up. work in process. And um, one of the things, you know, we've gotten, we're probably 75% there. Um and, you know, I have a vision and my dream home and all the things. And one of the things that I really, really want is an in-ground pool. And I picture myself with my grandchildren because mm -hmm. now I've got, we still have kids at home, but we also have, we have six kids and we have now four grandchildren. And I just picture like our family time and mm -hmm. we're outside and we're around the pool and it's beautiful and all the things. And I want it really bad. <laughs> and Aaron and I have been processing through this. And sometimes when I overwhelm Aaron with something that he's not ready to unpack together <laughs> verbally and process, process, he kind of, like, that's a, a, a point of contention for us. Like, I want to draw it out of him. I want answers. I want to know what he thinks. I uh -huh. want all that. And he needs time to process in his way. And so that makes it even harder. So <laughs> th we went through this period of time um, and it became a conflict. Um, I'm not proud to admit. It became a conflict. And as this bubbled up inside me, I started getting very angry. And when we had a verbal discussion about it, I was like, I work my butt off. I, you know, here's all the things that I do. I go to bed tired from work, from all the things that I do in our company. Um, and I need a break. And you don't like to vacation because he's, I mean, we're both homebodies, but I like vacations. And he's like, it's stressful for him because of all the things that need to be taken care of at home. So. I felt some resentment about it. Like, just because you're okay not, like, doing self-care doesn't mean I am. And I basically, I landed at, I deserve this. 
Like I work my butt off, I deserve it. And not only do I deserve it, but I'm angry with you for not recognizing that I deserve it and agreeing with me. You're kind of getting me worked up right now. Like I'm in your camp right now. <laughs> so take me back out of your camp. Okay. <laughs> so. Where do we go from here? And that was actually months ago. And we have actually a yeah. contract in place to start a pool in October. This is a huge financial thing for us. Like, you know, this isn't, like some people they can do this and it it's a blip on their financial, you know, budget. For mm -hmm. us, it's a bigger consideration and it means sacrifices. And um, it wasn't until the other day when I realized that I was operating from a place of entitlement. And the Lord showing me that um, every dollar that comes through your business is from a team effort. Like everybody on your team works their booties off. Mm -hmm. And every dollar that comes through there is a blessing from me. And just regrouping my head and my thought space about it that uh, I've been in an attitude of entitlement. Like, I felt like I have that coming to me. You know, I work hard and I deserve that. Yeah. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with having nice things. That is a blessing. But yeah. for me, when I'm coming from a place of, like, I have this coming, I worked hard and mm -hmm. I deserve this, mm -hmm there's darkness in my heart. Mm -hmm. And I'm not, like that works against, for me, that works against gratitude. Mm. So, Aaron, I'm having PTSD flashbacks. <laughs> <laughs> I know, huh? So that was just a big kind of a wake up call. You know how you can see something in other people, like you can say, oh wow, they're entitled. Yeah. But then it's Especially not as easy to see. Teenagers. Yes. <laughs> It's not as easy to see what that looks like in our own selves. Yeah, and I just, true. that was a, a harsh look in the mirror. And I'm like, I don't want to be that person I want to have. Mm -hmm. I want to have an attitude of gratitude. I want yeah. to be a grateful person. So mm -hmm. probably some of you can relate to me. <laughs> Very <sighs> cool. I actually, while I was, um, while we were setting up, I don't know, maybe God brought it to my mind to share, I don't know, but I just realized I had a similar, very, um, not, so, so mine was more about contented, contentment, oh, and that's, I feel like, really closely related. A cousin, maybe, of a entitlement? Cousin, a cousin of <laughs> entitlement is discontent. Yeah. And, um, and I have been very discontent lately with our home. And I think that a lot of you can relate to this, at least all of us probably, at least one time or another. And I live in a suburban home and it's a beautiful home. I love my home. On the inside of my home, I love my home. But I get, I get jelly of like people like Josie who have all this beautiful acreage and the privacy and the view out their windows because like many suburban homes, mine is smack up right next to the neighbor and we have a postage stamp backyard um, and all the things. So I have been for years now, I have an app on my phone. It's a real estate app called Zillow and anytime something comes up within my parameter, um, which is like five acres, a view, a pool, all the things like we, I can't afford, is at least not in California. Zillow? The devil's <laughs> using Zillow. I, did he just, did God just tell me to delete the app? I don't oh. know. I don't know. Maybe. I am feeling maybe. No, I don't think so. But, but it is hard. I, that was a thought, a little thought drop that dropped in the other uh -huh. day, like, it is hard to, like when you're constantly looking at something you don't have that you like it's and true. want, it's harder to be, content to be content with what you have. Yes. And I have been 100% feeling that for years and not recognizing it as discontentment. I've just been thinking, well, this is my dream. I'm looking toward my dream. I want, you know, but the more I look at it, the more I'm unhappy with where I'm at. And God just did some dealings with me recently within the past several months of what if you never move further from what you have? What if you, this is your home for the rest of your life? 
And then I changed my mindset. I just started thinking through all of the beauty that I have, all of the blessing that my home is and how much I love it and how I would be happy here for the rest of my life. Like this could be our forever home mm -hmm. and we would be blessed to have it. Um, and so I stopped pining over it. And so that's kind of a similar thread mm -hmm. and vein of how God's been working in me in um, just being content with all the blessings that God has given me where I'm at right now for our family. And it's so that you're right. Those are so related. Mm -hmm. And I feel like there's this for people who are uh, wired to be per, like to, to be entrepreneurs, for example, mm -hmm. and to do more and to envision big things and things like that. I We're feel driven. like, yeah, driven. Mm -hmm. I feel like there's a, um, there's, Something to, it's a thing to find that sweet spot where you can still, because I believe that's a God-given, a God-given thing to, to have vision and to, exactly, a God-given attribute to have yeah. vision and to um, work for something more. Um, so I don't want to, you know, dismiss that as a negative thing, but mm -hmm. doing it in balance of being able to be happy and content right where I'm at. Yeah. Even if it never changed. Exactly. But to also um, move. In how, that. how to dream and be content. At the same time. At the time. same time. How exactly. to have vision and dream and, and have goals, but also to be 100% not just content, but present. grateful. And present, present and uh, thankful for all of the things and blessings that God has you in yes. right now. So, and it's such a good, um, it's such a, I think a good thing to to ponder on and pray about because, mm -hmm. um, case in point, Aaron and I are wired very differently. And I remember, I don't know if any of you follow at all Jenna Kutcher, but she had this same conversation, and it so resonated with me because she was talking about how. Her husband is wired so differently than her. He's content. And he would be mm. content if they had nothing more than what they have right then. And that she had to learn because she's driven. Mm -hmm. um, but not to a point that it's a negative thing. But she's just wired very differently. And she mm -hmm. is a hustler in the most positive sense of the word. But learning that there's not one right way. And to appreciate the fact that um, and honor the fact that mm -hmm. her husband Who is wired husband differently is and to, to be. for them to be intentional about making the space for that as well. Yeah. So I think it's That's a really good. good lesson to keep in front of our eyes mm -hmm. and doing so. And it's easy to think like, oh, I am the hustler trying to, and I'm dragging you uphill. <laughs> you know what I mean? When that's yeah. not, that's not real. No. And, and God puts us together. Mm-hmm. For a reason and um, oh yeah I mean we've talked about this a lot before but our husbands are such a blessing in our business because yes. we're we balance so well um, mm -hmm. and they are so much a part of the reason why we actually get stuff done around here <laughs> yeah <laughs> because, no it's true because we need that <clears throat> grounding and um, and so. once in a while you might see a little bit of conflict like when somebody's like all big about the budget and like we gotta meet these budget needs. So tired of hearing about the budget. <laughs> Just kidding. We tease. But kind it's of. real. We you know, <laughs> appreciating kind of appreciating that aspect. So hundred yes, percent. That's it, you guys. We just wanted to share that and yes. um, show up and just chat with you guys. Keep the conversation going. Has Have you recently just kind of had some self-awareness about this um, or anything similar? Feel free to share in the comments and yeah. we'll keep this conversation going. Yeah, absolutely. And mm -hmm. like um, all of these bigger ideas, Sally mm -hmm. and I were talking about how they really are so related to our niche of creativity yes. and um, you know what that looks like in a mm -hmm. in a a family and so forth. Yeah, um, it's a foundational piece. Our it mindset is. about yes. how we see everything is yeah. foundation how from which we're operating from. And your mindset and yes, and and just having that gratitude and that self awareness is so important to your outlet and your output 
in terms of creativity. So yeah. just keeping that in mind. All right, you guys. Thank you for joining us, yes, everyone. Thank you. We we'll will talk be to reading you the comments and share and um, enjoying hearing your guys' experience with the same things. Yeah, we Come shared. on, fess up. Yes, don't don't hold back. Well, maybe hold back something. I don't know. <laughs> okay, we'll end it here.